Good morning, everyone. Hello. Um, I'm Mark Ipperson, as uh, you've just heard. I'm going to cram 20 minutes into 10, uh, because I've never done it in 10 minutes before this particular uh, deck. So what I want to try and talk about is how do we bring some disruption to the industry to become, make it mainstream? Less than 1% of us hold crypto. And what we want to try and do is, to make it successful, we need to learn some lessons from some of the other industries out there, maybe banking even. It, Heaven forbid. So uh, I want to talk to you about that for 10 minutes, uh, now eight and a half. So a, a bit of background to me, because it's worthwhile knowing who's talking, I guess. Um, I started my career in mainstream banking in Barclays and uh, ran an internet banking business, which I sold in 2003, ran a consultancy. And then I founded a bank called Starling Bank uh, in the UK. I was a CTO of Starling Bank. And then I worked at a company as a CTO of Centrip, which is a great little business that does foreign exchange. And last year, I founded Zigloo, uh, which I'll talk about in a few minutes. Uh, we expect to be Europe's first regulated crypto bank. So it all changed in 2015. Uh, lots, of, lots of response to all the banks not being able to regulate themselves for hundreds of years. Banks lost lots of money, our money. We, we uh, propped them up. We told them that uh, they, sh they shouldn't do it again. Uh, in the UK, the FCA got involved, uh, converted from the FSA, got a, got a few teeth, and made a, made a difference, a big difference, in terms of giving people a chance to get a banking license in the UK. And Starling, uh, Monzo, Tandem, Atom took advantage of that. Uh, I was CTO and founder of... Uh, of this particular bank, Starling Bank. So what I want to try and do is reflect on some of the lessons that we learnt so that we can bring those into crypto um, in 2019. So Starling did pretty well. Um, it, it responded well to the fact that there was a gap in the marketplace for um, uh, an app-only bank. I remember talking to many VCs and even talking to the FCA and the PRA, which is part of the Bank of England. And they couldn't believe we're going to launch a bank with no branches, with uh, uh, with no website even, an app-only bank. Are you serious? Yeah, we're serious. Um, we took advantage of the fact that we could get a fast-pass banking license, which gave us the ability to be able to not build your whole bank and, and have all the investor funds in place, a bit like Metro Bank did a few years earlier, but actually go through the process one step at a time, taking in funding. It allowed us to be able to launch what we think is a great bank taking funding every step of the way. And in June 2016, we got our banking license. I won't read what's on the screen because you can read that yourselves, but uh, we're one of a few banks in the UK that, um, uh, and in Europe now that's, that's doing pretty well. So some key figures. Um, some of you will recognize what the figures are. 800,000 current account customers, 30,000 business customers. Banks really don't like that, I tell you. The, the, the incumbent banks hate the fact that we're now taking uh, SME customers from them. £1,200 is the average balance of an account with Starling Bank, 10 times Monzo. 500 staff, and the only challenger bank in the world to offer their banking platform as a, as a service to other um, banks um, used by one or two others, as you may know. So we'd like to think we helped kick off the, the, the revolution in banking in, in Europe. But there's some others as well you'll know about. They've taken about 14 million customers from banks around Europe. Uh, and the banks so far, the big banks, the Barclays, the Lloyds, et cetera, haven't really been worried until relatively recently, until banks started taking their SME customers and making a real difference. SME customers generate real value. Uh, and now they're starting to take notice and starting to worry. So all those banks have done pretty well. Uh, three of those banks have now launched in the States and have all got a presence in, in Europe as well. So I guess what I'm saying is, can we learn some, something from these banks and bring it into crypto? Because there's no point having a best kept secret, which is crypto, and only a few of us in this room know how to buy, sell, and move it around. We need to bring it into the mainstream. So what did we get right and what did we get wrong? Well. The technology is quite important, and, and has been, as I was a CTO of uh, the last two businesses, it's quite important to me as well. Uh, Starling Bank, as with Monzo and Revolut, has built its banking platform from scratch. 
Uh, no other current account bank in the world has done that in the last 100 years, well, 60 years, until the, the 1960s when the mainframes were built. So having a technology platform that allows you to be able to do things quickly, an agile dev team, getting stuff done quickly in two week iterations to be able to respond and innovate is really important. You also don't have to pay someone else to your banking platform as well, and that's really quite useful. UX, the user experience, I think we got right. Um, it works well, and people come to us because it really works well. You know, having your, your bank in your hand, interacting with it multiple times a day, every time you go and pay for something at Pret or at Eat or wherever you're buying a, your lunch, and seeing notifications, seeing a balance, seeing if you want to put, put that money towards your pension or repay off your mortgage to repay your mortgage off in two years' time if you weren't doing that. All these new features and functions, that user experience is what every single bank's racing for at the moment, and the challenges own it at the moment. Customer acquisition. To be honest with you, we were staggered at how many customers we got. We didn't forecast we would have anything like this many customers after three years. The numbers we put to the PRA and, and the, the SCA in the UK we're significantly less than numbers we've got, so we're doing, we're doing well. The problem is, those customers aren't switching to us in the numbers that we thought. So if you don't switch to your new bank, they can't understand your income, they can't in understand uh, what your direct debits and standing orders are, what your commitments are, so they can't lend to you. If they can't lend to you, they can't make money. So that's a big problem for the challenger banks. The switch rates at Monzo are really low, they're in the 30s and the switch, switch rates uh, at Starling are in the 60s. So they're doing better, hence the reason why the average balances are greater as well. So that's part of the problem. And one of the things that we haven't got right at, at Starling, that Monzo got right, was people love Monzo more than they love Starling. They've got a really good social media presence. They're great people. You know, the, the team at Monzo are great. Not that the team at Starling aren't great, they are, of course. But there's something they got across well to, to the mass market. Their, their coral card that, that everyone, uh, everyone uses, are certainly in London. Uh, I, I was in uh, Pret only a couple of weeks or so ago, and there's a couple of people in front of me paid with their coral uh, Monzo card. They put it down together for their, for their coffee and looked at each other and high-fived each other as though like, you, you're part of some club. We, didn't, we haven't got that working at Starling yet, so there's stuff that we can learn from that as well. So, it's 2019 and, and crypto's the new challenger. So, what are the silver bullets? There's four silver bullets for a, a revolution, because we need to bring uh, crypto to the masses. So, one of the first things that I think is, is important is trust. Now, in the UK, banks have got uh, an FCA license. They also guarantee the money with an FSCS guarantee. That's the 85,000 pounds you'll, you'll be aware of, 100,000 euros, I believe. Uh, and uh, a B corporation is quite important. That's something that's come out of San Francisco over the last couple of years. It's something that provides a degree of values and, and belief in doing the right thing. Very few banks, if any, in the world are currently B corporation are registered. So, but being regulated, being transparent, and and prioritizing security and getting that right is really important. Ease. How painful is it to open an account with one of, one of the big exchanges? It's, it's a nightmare. So it's really important that an onboarding journey is quick. It takes two or three minutes to onboard through Starling on Monzo or, or, or Revolut or any of those guys. We need to bring that into crypto, but while keeping the security as high as it is. Um, and why is it so difficult to, to try, and, try and get the best price for your crypto and try and work out what currency you've got to buy a certain pair? It's a, it's a pain and, uh, and no one likes it. Um, so bringing the touch and the tac tac tactile nature of a, of a mobile phone into, into using crypto is really important as well. Um, and, and spending your crypto. So crypto is not just a, an asset. It's something that you should be able to spend. It's a cryptocurrency after all. Finally. You want, to like, you want to like the person that you've got an account with. You want to like, like the person, be genuine, put the customer first, and try and put, try and try and put uh, the, the customer before profits or greed. Um, and it, it's important to try to help excite people and, and, and give people something that they're, they're um, genuinely looking forward to using, something that you pick, up, you pick up your phone to try to understand the balances and, and moving money around and be likable, be nice. Um, so what we're trying to do is bring something to the world that, that gets those things right, because um, we think it will become mainstream. And uh, my, uh, my company is, uh, is launching um, this uh, product. It's uh, the world's, or well, Europe's, first crypto bank. 
incorporating crypto, foreign exchange, and a, a full bank account. Um, and we're launching it uh, next month. It's out to friends and family now. And, uh, and it's called Ziggly. So um, I've just done it exactly on time, I think, actually. So um, thank you very much for your attention. And it was nice talking to you.